I mean, Bjorn Lomborg, the uh, Danish statistician who did the Copenhagen consensus, now he actually believes that humans are causing significant climate change, and I've been in arguments with him over that. But even if you believe that we are causing significant climate change, if you do an actual cost-benefit analysis of the world's problems, and you, you order them based on what you should do first, things like malnutrition and bad drinking water and wars and corruption, they fall way above global warming solutions. In fact, he has a mitigation of global warming right near the bottom of his list. I mean, I challenged him and said, well, I don't think it should even be on your list because these are things that humans affect. Global warming is probably not one of them, at least not significantly. And of course, he disagreed with me on that because he believes in the uh, IPCC. But even believing in the IPCC, when he brought together UN ambassadors who then had to prioritize the world's top problems, global warming fell very low. Now, this was UN ambassadors, okay? These are not, uh, you know, right wing capitalists or something. These are UN ambassadors from all over the world were brought together and they did a Copenhagen consensus as well. If you go to the Copenhagen consensus website, you can see the actual priority that they put it in. They did the same thing with student groups, okay, who you would think would be quite left wing. But when they were actually forced between helping people now in Africa who are dying due to bad drinking water or the possibility of climate change in 50 or 100 years, they helped people now. So even if the science were right, what we're doing with the UN right now is wrong. A potential for business uh, development in the new green economy where the competition is so much fiercer as likely to grow, uh, particularly in the East as it is now. Um, and the uh, basic assumption that something can be achieved here because if you can't change the climate at all which is what actually is coming out. What can you achieve with this whole thing? Were it not that you're trying to achieve something that is not obvious. And what is not obvious seems to me to be a hidden agenda, which is 100% political and very little to do with uh, saving the climate. The thing is, if you want to implement a no regrets policy, the, the, the question you want to ask yourself is, uh, if there's uncertainty about whether climate change is real or not, how can we implement a policy that will make sense even if it's not real or even if it's not a major problem. And if you take uh, a thing like, like uh, flooding, um, sea levels may rise or fall for all kinds of reasons. If you've avoided climate change and sea, and sea levels still rise, you're, you're no better off. In fact, you've spent some resources on, avoid, on trying to avoid climate change that you could have spent on uh, avoiding flooding in other ways, building uh, dikes, etc., levees. Well, most things come good because of growth and the increase in wealth. And uh, what this conference is uh, genuinely is about is an attack on both of those. And uh, to that extent, uh, uh, the uh, environmental issues will probably get worse rather than better. So I think they're headed in the wrong direction. I mean, 180 degrees in the wrong direction. Okay, if I had my five minutes there, I would say, don't sign any of this nonsense, get real. What is needed? What does the third world want so far as climate and weather is concerned? And the answer is, what we should have is international cooperation to prepare for, to, sorry, we should have international cooperation to predict and prepare for extreme weather events. We know at Weather Action we can forecast extreme events around the world, we've done them with great success, for example those floods in Sri Lanka where 58,000 people were recently made homeless, we predicted that for months ahead between the, for, for the, between the 17th and 19th of November. Those sort of things and anything other people can do should be done to prepare for climate and weather extremes and act against them. I think we're all in favour of energy conservation and recycling where it makes economic sense. For example, you certainly recycle gold and silver because it makes economic sense. You even recycle lead because it's cheap to recycle lead and lead is valuable. So some things should be recycled and some things are not worth recycling. That's an individual decision. That's, uh, it's not a global issue. It has nothing to do with greenhouse effects and nothing to do with climate. It has to do with sensible conservation based on economic factors. 
I believe deeply in democracy. Democracy is that each person should be able to evaluate information and then make your own choice of this. But if the thing you are being given, the, so, so, the thing which you should, should judge is false, then democracy is gone. The, the, my greatest fears are not any of the things that you have mentioned regarding cap and trade and what they're going to do. I think the greatest fear is the uh, position that a small group of people are trying to uh, clothe themselves with. And uh, I mean, you're talking about uh, an organization and a budget which sometimes equals that of the EU itself. A new layer of uh, government being superimposed.